The English alphabet has 26 letters, consisting of 5 vowels and 21 consonants. A vowel is a speech sound made without constricting the vocal tract, but a consonant is a sound produced by a constriction. The 26 letters sound and are spelled like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. The five vowels in English are A, E, I, O, and U because they're produced without the vocal tract. Sometimes the letters Y and W act as vowels when they follow another vowel letter like in the words toy and power. Mainly, Y and W will remain consonants, but it doesn't mean it's the only sound consonants produce in English. English has many digraphs and diphthongs, which make the language produce different sounds by combining two different letters to make one sound. Digraphs consist of two consonants making one new sound, but diphthongs are two vowel sounds that combine to make a new one. Common examples with digraphs are S and H making SH, C and H making CH, T and H making TH, W and H making W, P and H making F, G and H also making F, and C and K making K. These digraphs can be at the beginning, middle, or end of any word. Short, cashew, and cash all have the sh sound in any place. Chest and arch have the ch sound. That, other, and cloth all have the th sound. W and H making a w sound are mainly used at the beginning of words, like question words. What, when, and where. P and H tend to make a f sound, like in the words photo, graphic, and graph. The most common use for G and H is when they're placed at the end of words, like laugh, tough, and enough. The same applies to C and K, making K, like in the words back, deck, and sock. These, however, are not the only digraphs because there are digraphs with silent letters, like K and N, W and R, G and N, and G and H. K and N are mainly silent at the beginning of words, like no and not. The same goes for W and R, wrist and wrap. The same also goes for G and N and G and H, like nat, nash, ghost, and gat. Some of these silent letter digraphs also come at the end of words, like G and N and M and B. Sign, align, comb, and limb. Likewise, there are W control digraphs like A and W, E and W, and O and W, which have two sounds depending on the consonants. Saw has an A control W, new has an E control W, and the words now and snow have two different sounds because of the additional consonants. Unlike digraphs, diphthongs combine two vowels to make a new vowel sound. Just like the previous words, these can also have different sounds, depending on additional consonants. Common diphthongs are A and I, making A like in rain, A and Y, also making A like in day, E and E, making E like in B, E and A, also making E like in eat, I and E, making I like in pie, E and I, making E like in weird, O and O, making O like in moon, O and U, making two sounds, ow and O, like in noun and soul. O and E, also making two sounds, O and U, like in toe and shoe. U and E, making O, like in blue, E and Y, making E like in key, O and Y, making oi like in toy, o and i also making oi like in coin, and a and u making two sounds, a and e, like in auto and ant. Digraphs and diphthongs are actually very vital in English because they can help develop strong reading skills by recognizing and decoding sounds in any words and phrases. Still, these are not the only sound rules in English. There are phonic rules that relate to the spelling of words that would act as exceptions. For example, if the letter C precedes E, I, or Y, the sound of C will have the soft sound of S, as in center, city, and cyber. Using any other letter, C will usually sound like the K sound. The same applies to the letter G. When it precedes E, I, or Y, it will have the soft sound of J, as in gem, jib, and jim. In any other case, G will usually sound like G. English also has the silent E, which indicates that the vowel in front of it is long, when a syllable ends in the silent E. Common words of that are make, gene, kite, rope, 
use, and many more. Aside from phonic rules, there are basic syllable rules that show how to break up a multisyllable word into syllable parts. Some English words have two middle consonants, which can be split when pronouncing them. Common words can be happen, basket, letter, supper, and dinner. The only exception to this rule are the consonant digraphs, which never split up because they represent a new sound. Another rule states that when there is only one syllable, we usually divide it in front of it, as in open, item, evil, and report. English also has an LE syllable, which divides the consonant when there is a word that has the spelling of LE, sounding like L. Common examples are able, fumble, and double. Moreover, English has accent rules, which are diacritics, and they're generally not used to write native English words, but still exist in the letters. When a word has more than one syllable, one of the syllables is a little louder than the others. The syllable with the louder stress is the accented syllable. It may seem that the placement of accents is random, but there are rules for such words, like progress and refill. If the accents of these words are put on different syllables, the word type will change. Progress is a noun, meaning a forward movement, but progress is a verb, meaning to move forward. Refill is a noun meaning an act of filling again, but refill is a verb meaning to fill again. In words that have suffixes or prefixes, the accent is usually on the main root word, like boxes. When there are two consonant letters within a word, the syllable before the double consonants is usually accented, like in the word beginner. In words of three or more syllables, one of the first two syllables is usually accented, as in accident and determine. In addition, English has special rules that are inflexible and do not have special exceptions, at least in native English words. One of these is the letter U, which is always placed after Q, as in Queen, Quartz, Quarry, and Quiz. This way, U is not considered to be a vowel. A different rule is that S never follows the letter X. Some English words are pronounced with an S sound after X, but are never followed by S. Instead, the letter C is used, as in excise and excite. An extension to C preceding E, I, or Y, it's possible to say I before E, except after C. Many English words include the diphthongs of I and E, where I comes first, as in belief, cashier, and achieve. It is generally true that I comes before E, unless the vowel pair follows C, as in ceiling, or if the vowel pair makes a long sound, as in neighbor. The only exceptions are special words, like leisure, height, and heist. Another rule is that prefixes generally do not change the spelling of words. The rule for adding prefixes to a word is much simpler than adding a suffix from a spelling perspective, like D to activate results in deactivate. Similarly, adding non to fiction becomes non-fiction. English also has apostrophes, which are placed where letters are removed. An apostrophe in English should be placed in the spot where there is a missing letter, like in the word can't, which signifies the missing letters N and O from the word cannot. Similarly, the word doesn't signifies the missing letter O from the word not from the phrase does not. Another special rule is the suffix shun, which is made from T-I-O-N, mainly placed at the end of words. This suffix means the state or result of. Seeing this prefix at the end of a word signifies that the word is a noun, making a shun sound. However, it can be spelled using two ways, t-i-o-n and s-i-o-n. t-i-o-n is more common, but if an original word ends in a double s, which is a special digraph, the sound of shun will be spelled using s-i-o-n. For instance, the verbs confess, discuss, and possess all end in a double s, and to turn them into a noun as a result of, we need to use s-i-o-n. Confession discussion, and possession. The same applies to different verbs that may have different endings but will still have the S-I-O-N ending, as in confuse and confusion, precise and precision, explode and explosion, and exclude and exclusion. The last two basic rules in the English alphabet are that X will never start a word and that I, J, U, and V will never end a word, unless they're not English native words. Finally, there is the last sounding rule in the English alphabet, which is unknown to many learners, and that is the schwa. Because English has a lot of stressed words, it combines other words that are not stressed to maintain a balance. For the same reason, words of more than one syllable have both stressed and unstressed syllables. 
The schwa is related to the short vowel sounds because it can be spelled by any of them. It's also known as the lazy sound. The schwa sound is represented by the phonetic alphabet, which is why, in terms of dialect, many speakers skip over the sound. A schwa can replace a controlled vowel, like O and E, when it makes up an unstressed syllable. Like in the sentence, I am going to the doctor with my sister later. The sound of the vowels is not that noticeable when the phrase is said, but in other dialects, it might not sound at all. To understand the concept of stress in any sentence, we have to link the schwa to unstressed vowels. This can be understood when marking stressed syllables in written words, especially in words that have the same spelling but different stresses, like content and content. The schwa sound is heard in content when spoken, even though the word is spelled with an O, and it's the same with E, content. It's a vowel sound that is used in unstressed syllables, and it is the most common vowel sound in English. Learning the spelling of words with the schwa using a spelling voice is very helpful, because pronouncing the unstressed syllable will indicate if the sound was stressed. Associating base words containing the schwa is also useful, which makes the sound be heard perfectly. An excellent representation of the schwa can be done with the vowel A. The schwa can make the vowel A sound like A uh in the following words. About, amaze, away, again, around, ahead, alone. The same can be done in these words. Certain, fountain, salid, thousand. The same thing can also be done with the remaining vowels having a schwa, which cuts down the effort of speaking and raises the amount of information that can be said a lot faster. Elephant, carpet, taken, telephone, animal, pencil, accident, promise, carrot, bottom, ribbon, phantom, rhombus, upon, supply, medium. Ultimately, the English schwa is a low-effort phoneme that allows parts of speech to sound faster, and the more ideas our brains can get across, the better our understanding will be.